right into part two just this morning as a result of what transpired yesterday. So to shed some light on uh, some of those scenarios that you might have seen play out, we've got those two gentlemen joining us virtually this morning. Mr. Daniel Nalong is a former majority leader for Plateau Assembly. He's a member of the APC. And we also do have Mr. Timothy Dantong, who is a former deputy speaker of Plateau Assembly. He's a member of the PDP. Gentlemen, good morning and thank you for joining us on the program today. So, Mr. Daniel Nalong, let's start with you. So, tell us, um, what's your reading of what happened yesterday? Well, thank you very much for the question. Uh, I want to truly, indeed, appreciate the efforts of the security personnel who actually came out to foretell any breakdown of law and order. But to be honest, I was actually disappointed and quite unfortunate that uh, this kind of situation or plateau state will always be on the media for the wrong reasons. Uh, when we say we are honorable members, we indeed need to be honorable in our conduct and in every, you know, words that we speak. But when we ought to demonstrate or show leadership to our followers, and then we end up being the one inciting people to, you know, take the laws into their hands by having an unholy gathering, which we know that Nigeria is governed by a constitution, and this constitution is the one that has given strength to our democracy. And democracy is standing on the rules of law. And so I expect that people who are leaders in their own right should understand that the society can only be when we respect the laws that governs us. But when we decide to take the laws into their hand, our hand is quite unfortunate. The appearance of the 16 members of the PDP trying to force their way into the State House of Assembly was quite unfortunate. It is regrettable. And we pray that these kind of things should not happen. All right, I think he's, uh, he's frozen, uh, so we'll try and get that connection back. So um, his account, as you've heard there, is that uh, the 16 members, former members of the House, appeared to force their way into the Assembly. But Mr. Uh, Daniel Nalong, so um, because there are different accounts and narratives of what transpired, you saying for sure that they didn't come for anything else other than to come there and force their way, because one wonders what sense would it make if they came in and forced their way, because plenary didn't even hold in the first place, did it? Sir? Was there plenary yesterday? Well, based on the information available to us yesterday, the remaining eight members who, uh, who were the people who went on recess were back, and according to them, there was an executive session. But of course, like I said, the 16 SAC members who wanted to forcefully go and, for whatever reasons, they want to, uh, you know, participate in the plenary of yesterday was quite unfortunate because they are no longer members of the Plateau State House of Assembly. Yeah, so what, what I'm asking is, there was no plenary yesterday. So why, how are you saying that they wanted to go and participate in something that was not even scheduled to but, hold yesterday? But, it was their action in trying to force uh, themselves into the house that actually, you know, uh, uh, deny or make the speaker not to go ahead with the plenary because he didn't want any commotion in the house. That was the reason why they didn't uh, sit yesterday. But the house was supposed to sit. The plenary was supposed to happen yesterday. But quite unfortunate, there were intruders who want to invade the house and, of course, cause commotion. So in the interest of peace, I think that was the reason why the speaker had to stand down the plenary to allow the police to handle the situation in a manner that there will be no uh, rancor. But we also spoke to Mr. Form yesterday, and he told us that there was no way that they were going to go to the house and try to force themselves because they know what the law says. So it's kind of surprising to see that uh, this is your account of what actually happened. The video is very clear. You can also find out from the police and, of course, journalists who were there live. What were they at the State House of Assembly for? What was the motive of going there? 
when, because they had their press conference, it should have ended there. But for them to have mobilized their talks, and of course, mobilized the 16 of them were at uh, the State House of Assembly. It was the policemen that stopped them from entering. If not, what I am telling you would have happened yesterday. So they shouldn't deny that they were not there. The video coverage is, I mean, evidence to show that they were at the State House of Assembly, which the former speaker uh, was trying to address their followers that they are in government, that they can use all the powers necessary to undermine anybody that will stop them from carrying out an unholy act okay. that will undermine status of our, uh, all right. I mean... Just, just hang on a second. Uh, um, let, let me uh, bring in uh, Mr. Timothy Dantong on this matter. So, uh, glad to have you join us back. So, tell us, did your members, because, I mean, Mr. Uh, Daniel Danlong says, your members, 16 of you, went there to force your way to plenary, having been ousted by the courts. Why did that happen? We are plateau people. I want to, uh, you know, good morning, sorry. Uh, just to answer this question, we are plateau people. And every plateau person is entitled to go to the House of Assembly when they are having plenary to either watch the sitting or, you know, participate or contribute in whichever way, if it's necessary. And I want to tell you that uh, some of us, the members, you know, 16 of us who were wrongly served by the appeal court, we are the premises of the State House of Assembly as the House resumed sitting yesterday. And we went there, nobody stopped us, no police stopped us because they don't have right to stop anyone to come into the House of Assembly. We went to the complex. All right, I think his, uh, his connection is, we lost that connection, so we'll try and get it back. But uh, what he's trying to tell us, uh, uh, Mr. Daniel, uh, now long, you, you heard him. I don't know how much of that you heard. He said he asked Plateau people, they've got a right to go and see what's going on. And so as maybe, hold on, I think I will, can still hear something. I think we've got him back. Mr. Timothy Danfo, are you there now? Okay, he's still frozen. But it, look, it appears as though he's saying that they went there not to force themselves on plenary, but going there as Plateau people. <laughs> hey, uh, listening to what he is saying, you don't need a prophet to tell you that the 16 SAC members could just ordinarily want to watch the plenary as though they were watching for the first time. Or was there anything that was of great uh, public importance that would have warranted them to want to go to the House of Assembly? So it is quite unfortunate. When we are leaders, let us speak to ourselves the truth. Democracy is standing on the strength of the rules of law. And as leaders, we must demonstrate it, that whatever happened, we should have the emotional balance to accept it in good faith. Just like we accepted the Supreme Court ruling, we would have mobilized our people to say that, no, we are not in tune with what the, the, the Supreme Court says. We would have keyed in and quoted Palana for raising some fundamental issues with the judgment of the Supreme Court. But because we are law abiding, we didn't want to contest anything with the law. And that was why you couldn't see our members going there to foment any trouble. We were not there. But why are the 16? I think you should give a better explanation to the people of Nigeria to understand the status and the caliber of people yeah. who, who ought to be members of the House of Assembly that were already sacked. Okay. So, uh, Mr. Nanlong, you said... They had no right. He says they have a right as a people to go there to observe what is going on. Are you saying that they have no right to do that? I am not contesting their right, but could it be a coincidence that the 16 of them having had, uh, you know, there was a press conference they had night before the, the, the 23rd, and they made it very clear that they were going to resume uh, office on, on the 23rd. So if he is denying it, it's quite unfortunate. It's unbecoming okay. of leaders who ought to demonstrate, you know, goodwill to their people. All right. They just just hang on, Mr. Daniel. Well, I think we'll have him back. So, Mr. Timothy and Anton, could you tell us then? Uh, because everybody knows, it's clear, because even the chairman of the party said you're going to do everything possible to get the mandate back. So how could you say that you were going there 
as Plato people to watch proceedings. Every, when people know that you're not happy that the court sacked your members. Okay, well, this is not coming through um, as of yet. So uh, I think we might just uh, go on and see how we can wrap up with this one. So uh, Mr. Daniel, what would you suggest should be done moving forward now? Because uh, clearly, since the police has waited in, is there going to be another sitting of which members will go on and have that sitting? Nigeria is a country that is governed by laws, and the police are duty charged to enforce the law. There are uh, nobody, no group, no, no, no individual can threaten the strength of our constitution and the will and the resolve of the people of Nigeria to abide by the rules of law. So as far as I'm concerned, the, the, the authority concerned, I am sure they must have engaged them. I am sure that their leaders or leaders of goodwill must have called them to tell them that touring the path, you know, against the constitution is calling for anarchy. And therefore, like I said, as that we're experiencing on the plateau, anybody who loves plateau, anybody who claims that he's a lover of plateau and wants to see plateau develop, I think it is, it is high time. Look at what even happened yesterday in Mangu. If anybody is concerned about the development of plateau state, should not make any attempt to further, you know, cause more havoc. Okay. So we, we are... Mr. Long, let me ask you a question here. The, uh, yes, you keep talking about the fact that there's a rule of law that Nigeria is guided by. There's a constitution and all. The same yeah. matter on which these 16 lawmakers were removed is the same matter on which the governor was retained as governor of Plateau State. Shouldn't they be uh, questioning why they were removed? Yes, if they would, nobody is challenging their right to contest anything, but they must do that in accordance to the rules of law. The courts are there. If you are dissatisfied, you know, with any ruling of the court, if there is room for review. You can channel your grievances at the right channel. But for you to resolve to self help by mobilizing talks, and undermining the security situation on the plateau by trying to create more havoc rather than calling right. for peace. I quite unfortunate. Mm. It's quite unfortunate, sir. You know, you, you continue to make that statement that they mobilized thugs. Were you there to see that there yeah. were thugs or it was just them in their vehicles coming in? No, 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 no. They came alongside with thugs. They were chanting. So you, you, were, know, you were able to identify the thugs from the video you saw? I am a plateau man. I, I was a member of PDP. I know what they are capable of doing. And screening from the video so far, you could see it clearly. A man whose eyes is rolling up and down. And the security people will tell you the caliber of people who came to, 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 to the premises of the House of Assembly. Their intention was to cause anarchy. And that was why we didn't submit to their level of thinking. We, we, we didn't want to go there because we were waiting for the House to properly reconvene and invite us for inauguration. The Speaker is duty-bound to adhere to the verdict of the Appeal Court. Let me also tell you that, do you think we are happy with the, the Supreme Court judgment? All right. <sighs> All right, uh, um, we can't seem to reestablish that connection with Mr. Timothy Dangton because we needed to ask him some of those questions as well. But we have to thank you, uh, Daniel Nalong, former Majority Leader, Plateau Assembly. So you are a current member now, are you? Yes, I, I, I am a member elect waiting to be inaugurated. Okay, because I know you contested last time, lost out, but with that judgment, which now reinstated you. I, I, I was rigged out, but thank God my mandate has been uh, restored. All right. All right. So thank you for talking to us this morning.